friends? Today we are going to go over some routine on the uh, 2000 to 07 Silverados. Really kind of applies to more than just that too. But uh, on these trucks, um, you have greasable tie rod ends here, ball joints top and bottom, um, inner tie rods right there. You've got the, let's see if I can get around here, uh, the pitman arm up there. And then you've also got the steering uh, idler arm. Sorry, this is the idler arm. And you have the little, I don't know, the freaking box thing it hooks up to. Whatever, it doesn't matter. And then the pitman arm has a bleeder right there too, or a greaser right there too. Um, and the same thing on the other side, of course. So you got a bunch of points to grease, and I'll show you how to do those most efficiently. Now, because I have an aftermarket U joints, I also have bleeders on my, on my drive shaft, on the U joints, there. And I got one up here. So those are the needle style. So I'll show you how to do all this stuff. Most of these trucks are similar. Um, and people, you know, at this point have some replacement parts, so the drive shaft ones are useful to know. I'm getting ready for a long trip. I just want to get some routine maintenance done and we'll check some stuff out. Things to do before a long trip to make sure that your vehicle is ready to rock and roll, especially when it's 2005 with 214,000 miles like this is. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So first things first. First things first, I'm going to start real simple. Spin, listen for any terrible grinding noises or it quickly stopping. And then shake the wheel or push them forward and back in the wheel, make sure there's no ball joint play or bearing play. Um, side to side's good too. You're gonna have a little bit of play side to side, but you just gotta try to feel if there's anything wrong beyond just normal amount of play. So it's good to stick your head in here like this and just kind of look. If I don't see anything too alarming, I see pretty normal movement. There's because your steering box has a little bit of play. So you want to make sure the steering box is the only thing that's budging. What you did is on that side, we do this side. The big thing we want to do, and I'm gonna probably really just do this off camera, but um, we'll give a really good undercarriage inspection. So for example, this guy, not that it matters, it's supposed to be up there. That's my aftermarket transmission line. I should really cut that back one of these days, but we'll get to that some year. <laughs> um, just looking for leaks. Uh, brake line, that's a union. It's a little rusty, but it's totally fine. Um, trans lines on this truck are ran a little weird. I didn't run them. And actually, there's something to look at right there. You see that? Let's, let's rust right there on the transmission line, right where the light is. We'll zoom in on it. Not a big deal, but something to keep an eye out for. Now, if you'll notice, the engine does leak a little bit, but surely not enough for me to care. Doesn't affect anything. Um, the belts look fine. We've got a little bit of a power steering leak as well. It's just kind of coats the power steering and doesn't really seem to do anything else. So I'm not worried about it. It's an old truck, guys. It's going to leak a little. Um, check all your boots on your joints, CV joints. They look good. Uh, ball joints, they're all covered in grease and nasty right now, but they're good. Um, lot, the ball joints are actually original, the tie rods are not. Um, again, the engine's a little leaky, not worried about that, it's been like that forever. Um, nothing else too crazy leak-wise. Lines look good, starter. Um, the fuel lines, Go up over here. See those guys in there? Check those out. They're steel. They look okay. It's a New York State two truck, too, guys. So it's been crowned, undercoated, but it's still going to be a little crustier than you southern guys are used to. Fuel lines up there. Not the prettiest things in the world, but they're pretty solid. They're safe. They're good. Um, yeah, transfer case isn't leaking. Um, Going back here, looking at the suspension, everything looks good. No cracks in a leaf spring or anything crazy. None of that kind of stuff. In my experience, what you really want for greasing these trucks is a lock and lube, 90 degree fitting, and you need the needle greaser in my case for the uh, drive shaft. But with these three things, um, it makes greasing this go from being a pain in the complete butt to an absolute breeze. 
So I'll set the camera up and kind of show you what I do. Okay, so first, we are going to start off with this lower ball joint, which we can just use a lock and loop for. The, the, bleeder, the uh, greaser's right back here. Go ahead. Get down there. These you don't want to go crazy with. They just go until the boot is tensioned, because they don't really seem to bleed themselves out too well. The top, on the other hand, you can usually pump a bunch of grease into and it'll just start coming out. So now for the top ball joint, we're going to put our 90 degree fitting on. With the lock and lube, it's nice because it really holds it on there. We're a big fan of it, lock and lubes. They're uh, a little expensive, but honestly, I think they're worth it. I think it's an American made company, too, so that's cool. So we'll go up here. And I got grease coming out. I get a couple more pumps just because there was some crap in there. I've done these not too long ago, so they probably don't need much grease. Yours may need more. Now I'm just going to leave the 90 degree fitting on because they're easy enough to get to either way. So the car out on. This one's pretty uh, dry. Wow. Glad I'm doing this. Okay, that's much better. That was pretty dry. Well, this is why you grease things, huh? Uh, tie rod end. Probably easier to do with 90 degree fitting on. Not a big deal either way. We'll do it that way. Nah, actually, you could probably do this either way. Okay. And then, sometimes it gets stuck on there. I will reset you up and show you the pitman arm and the idler arm, which are the harder ones to do. I'll do their side first, ball joints and whatnot. Okay, so for your pitman arm, um, we're going to use a 90 degree angle fitting. We're going to reach up all the way over, put it on. Okay, so now we're on it. And then we're going to take our lock and lube, attach that, and then just pump grease in it. It's really hard to get the lock and lube up and around and down. The 90 degree fitting is a big game changer here. The other side for the idler arm, you want to push it so that the arm itself is just a little bit off center which puts your wheels just a little bit to the right. That way you can fit the 90 degree angle fitting on there. If you don't do that, the 90 degree angle fitting will run into the bottom of the engine or whatever the heck is right there. So we can sneak the lock and lube on here, depending on your vehicle and whatever, it might be easier to go this way with it. Push it on that way, I'll leave that up to you. Now for the idler, uh, Forget the name of this part, doesn't matter. Anyway, this last grease fitting up here, put your, I actually rested my grease gun in here the last time. It's also dripping, so that's fun. We'll take the grease gun out of there. And then we're just gonna put 90 degree fitting up there like you see. We'll attach our lock and lube to it, we'll be done.